In this module, we shall discuss about transactions, demand for money and bommel tobin model. We can recollect from our discussion on the Keynesian theory of money demand that one of the main reasons why people decide to hold money is the transaction's motive. Keynes had explicitly recognized the function of money as a medium of exchange. The class of money demand theories that focus on the function of money as a medium of exchange are called as transactions theories. Economists treat money, that is the narrowly defined M1, as a dominated asset. There are other assets which does play the role of store of value, yet paying a higher rate of return. So, it is not easy to convincingly explain the decision of people to hold money in their portfolio of assets. Transaction theories acknowledges the fact that money is a dominated asset and argue that people hold money to make purchases. These theories are in the best position to explain why people hold narrow measures of money such as currency, checking accounts instead of holding assets that dominate them such as savings account or T-bills. There are several transaction theories which differ on how one models the process of agents receiving the money and making transactions. But all these models make the assumption that holding money has a cost of very low rate of return but it has the benefit of making transactions much easier. Agents decide how much money to hold by trading off these costs and benefits. We shall now look at one of the most prominent transactions theories, the baumol tobin model. The baumol tobin model was developed in the 1950s by two economists, William Baumol and James Tobin. William Baumol, the transactions demand for cash, an inventory theoretic approach Quarter Journal of Economics 66, November 1952, 545-556 to 556, and James Tobin, The Interest Elasticity of Transactions Demand for Cash, Review of Economics and Statistics, August 1956, 241-247. to 247. This is still one of the most prominent theories of money demand. After studying this module, you shall be able to know the baumol tobin model, learn the assumptions of the model, learn how can the model be represented graphically and analyze the empirical evidence of the model. Let us first understand the baumol tobin model of cash management. Holding money in the direct form of cash helps the person holding it by making transactions much more easier as cash can be thought of the most liquid form of money with zero difficulty in making use of its liquidity. But the story does not end here. Holding cash in your hand has cost attached to it. The money that you are keeping with you earns zero interest. If the agent had deposited that money in a savings account, the money would have earned the agent interest income. Hence, we can say that the benefit of holding money is convenience. The person holding money need not to go to the bank to withdraw the money every time he or she has to make a transaction. The cost of holding money is the foregone interest the agent would have perceived had she or he decided to leave the money deposited in a savings account or any other form that would have paid interest. baumol tobin model analyzes the benefits and cost of holding money and hence arrives at the optimal money demand. Let me explain this trade-off a little further. Consider a person receiving an income of rupees 30,000 after all the taxes each month. Now, let us assume 
that the person spends rupees 30,000 evenly over the course of the full month at the rate of rupees 2,000 per day. We can think of the individual keeping the full 30,000 in hand and spending it at the rate of rupees 2,000 a day. What is the advantage of such a strategy from the individual? The advantage is that the individual can avoid visiting the bank entirely. We can think of the cost of visiting the bank as a sum of the total of several separate costs. Transportation cost, opportunity cost of the time spent visiting the bank, example wage lost, possible inconvenience of perhaps standing in a queue, etc. Whatever is the cost attached with visiting the bank, the individual saves this full amount. Is there any disadvantage from adopting this strategy? We can easily see the individual loses out on the interest income this amount could have generated. As the individual needs only 2000 a day, the rest of the money is lying idle with the individual and is generating zero income. The opportunity cost of this ideal cash held in hand is substantial. Another situation that can possibly happen is the individual keeping the full amount of rupees 30,000 in the bank and then visiting the bank every day and withdrawing rupees 2,000 and managing the day's expenses. Now let us think of the possible advantages and disadvantages of this strategy an extreme opposite strategy of the previous one. The clear advantage from adopting this strategy is that the individual earns the full interest income possible given the individual's income receipt and daily expenditure requirement. The disadvantage with this strategy is that the individuals need to make several visits to the bank. One can see that the individual needs to make visits equal to the number of days in the month, the maximum needed visits. When the individual gains on the maximum possible interest income, the individual loses out by having to incur the maximum possible cost of visiting the bank for withdrawing the money. But scenarios discussed are two extremes. A typical individual might not be behaving like this in any of the situations. So, how does a typical individual behave when faced with a similar situation having to decide the optimal demand for money? The baumol tobin model answers this question by analyzing the cost and benefits of holding money in hand. We shall now consider a very simplified version of this very popular model also called the inventory theoretic model. The model has such a name as the theory was originally developed to determine the optimum inventories of goods a firm should have on hand. Let us now discuss the assumptions of the model first. The assumptions of the baumol tobin model are as follows. First, the individual receives an income yn at the beginning of each month. Second, the individual spend the amount Yn at an even pace during the month. The model at this stage does not consider any unexpected expense requirement. Third, the model assumes that the individual has two options. One, he or she can hold money in hand in the form of cash. Else, the individual could deposit the money in a savings account which is equivalently in the bonds as well. Fourth, depositing money in a savings account or keeping it in the form of bonds earns interest at the rate of I per month. Fifth, there is a cost F per transaction for moving between bonds and money. Think of this as a sum total of all types of cost incurred in making a visit to the bank or converting bonds into money. For example, if the person has an hourly wage of rupees 300 an hour and spends 2 hours in making a visit to and back from the bank, hence the individual loses out on rupees 600, the individual might also have to incur transportation cost and might also 
be viewing the act of making this transaction a not so enjoyable one. So F captures the sum total of all these costs. Sixth, the model also assumes for convenience that monthly income YN is paid directly into the savings account or in the form of bonds. Seventh, the model assumes that the individual minimizes the cost of money management during the month. What does these costs consist of? These costs consist of the transactions cost. If n is the number of visits to the bank per month, then these transactions cost amount to n into f plus the interest foregone by holding money in hand instead of depositing in the savings account or holding it in the form of bonds. If M is the average money holding during the month, then this foregone interest amount to I into M. We can see that M, the average money holding during the month depends on N that is the number of visits to the bank or the number of transactions met for converting bonds into money. Let us now suppose that each time the individual makes such a transaction, he or she transfers amount C from bonds into money. And if the individual makes N such transactions in a month, then the following equation should hold. N into C is equals to YN. We shall now understand the diagrammatic representation of the model. The two diagrams throw more light on how the average money holding depend on N. In the first diagram, the individual makes only one transaction from the savings account to cash during the month. The individual would be visiting the bank in the beginning of the month, withdrawing the full YN and spending it evenly throughout the month. The second diagram shows the pattern of money holding when the individual makes two such transactions, one in the beginning of the month and the second in the middle of the month. In the first case, the average money holding during the month is YN divided by 2 and in the second case, the average money holding during the month is YN divided by 4. More generally, if there are n visits to the bank with equal sized withdrawals, then the average money holding during the month is yn divided by 2 into n. The total cost of this money management is hence total cost is equals to n into f plus i into yn divided by 2 into n. The problem before the individual is to minimize this co total cost. The optimum number of transactions required can be found by minimizing the total cost with respect to n. Using simple calculus, this cost minimization exercise yields that is n star is equals to under root i into y n divided by 2 into f. This is given as equation a. The optimum number of visits per month to the bank is also be shown in the following diagram. The cost of making an extra transaction is always E. This is the marginal cost of making another transaction given by MC. The benefit of making another transaction is the interest earned by keeping that extra money in the bank which is withdrawn now and keeping lesser money balances in hand. This interest earned is the marginal benefit from this additional transaction denoted by MB in the diagram. This marginal benefit declines with more withdrawals made and hence we have the downward sloping marginal benefit schedule. The optimum number of visits to the banks that is N star is given by the intersection of the marginal cost and marginal benefit schedule clearly denoting the cost minimization exercise of the individual. Using this value of n star, we can derive the optimum average monthly money holdings. Average money holdings, 
m is equals to y n divided by 2 into n star. Substituting n star from equation a, we get m is equals to under root y n into f divided by 2 into i. This is given as equation b. Factors affecting the number of visits to the bank and average money holdings. The factors that are going to directly influence the individual's decision about the number of visits per month to the bank and also the average money holding per month are very clear from the equation A and B. Let us see what those factors are. Factors affecting N star. Transaction fee. F minus N star. The optimum number of monthly visits to the bank depends inversely on F, the transactions fee associated with the conversion of bonds to cash or withdrawal from the savings account. This should be very clear intuitively also. F is the direct cost of increasing the number of visits to the bank. When the price of a visit to the bank goes up, then the number of visits N star comes down. Interest rate I minus N star also depends on the interest rate paid which is I. N star goes up when I goes up. Why does this happen? If you recollect, I is the reward of keeping money in the bank or it can also be interpreted as the direct opportunity cost of holding money in hand. So, as I goes up then the individual decides to make more visits to the bank keeping lesser money in hand, thereby enabling himself or herself to earn more interest. Income Yn minus N star also depends directly on Yn. As the nominal income received per month Yn goes up, the number of visits to the bank also goes up. Why do you think this is happening? Now we shall be discussing this in one of the review questions. Factors affecting the average monthly money holdings. The average monthly holdings per month also depends on several factors as it is very evident from equation B. The transaction fee F minus M depends directly on F as the cost of making a transaction, converting bonds into cash or making a withdrawal from the savings account goes up the average money holding also goes up. F is the cost or price attached with such a transaction and it becomes expensive to pay visit to the bank when F goes up and hence the individual decides to avoid the extra visit by keeping more money in hand. Interest rate I The average monthly money income depends inversely on the interest rate I. This should be very clear from the role that I plays in our model. I is the opportunity cost of holding money in hand and when the opportunity cost goes up, then the demand goes down. Here the demand is for the money holdings and hence the average monthly money holding goes down. Income YN Average monthly money holding depends directly on YN. As in the case of N star, think about reasons. We shall come back to this in one of the review questions. Elasticities of money demand. We can see clearly that the elasticity of money demand with respect to income is equals to half and also the elasticity of money demand with respect to the interest rate is half. The elasticity with respect to the transaction fee is also half. Demand for real balances. Money demand is a demand for real balances. The tobin baumol formula does not imply any money illusion. Let us see this in more detail. Suppose all prices in the economy goes up. That is, along with Yn going up, we have F the transaction fee also going up. This would double the average money holding. This shows clearly that agents under the assumption of this model does not suffer from money illusion. So, 
we have to be careful while referring to the elasticity terms. The elasticity of real money holdings with respect to the real income is half. If income rises only because all other prices have risen including F, then nominal money holding rises proportionately. Further, we shall discuss the empirical evidence of the baumol tobin model. The baumol tobin model, for example, makes precise predictions for how income and interest rates influence the money demand. The model square root formula implies that the income elasticity of money demand is half. A 10% increase in income should lead to 5% increase in the demand for real balances. It also says that the interest elasticity of money demand is half. That is, a 10% increase in the interest rate, say from 10% to 11%, should lead to a 5% decrease in the demand for real balances. Most empirical studies of money demand do not confirm these predictions. They find that the income elasticity of money demand is larger than half and that the interest elasticity is smaller than half. Thus, although the baumol tobin model may capture a part of the story behind the money demand function, it is not completely correct. One possible explanation for the failure of baumol tobin model is that some people may have less discretion over their money holding than the model assumes. For example, consider a person who must go to the bank once a week to deposit her paycheck while at the bank she takes advantage of her visit to withdraw the currency needed for the coming week. For this person, the number of trips to the bank N does not respond to the changes in expenditure or the interest rate because N is fixed, average money holding which equals Y divided by 2 into N are proportional to expenditure and insensitive to the interest rate. Now, imagine that the world is populated with two sorts of people. Some obey the baumol tobin model, so they have income and interest elasticities of weighted average of the demands of the two groups. The income elasticity will be between half and one and the interest elasticity will be between half and zero as the empirical studies find. Let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. The class of money demand theories that focus on money's function as a medium of exchange is known as transaction theories. Next, the baumol tobin model also known as the inventory theoretic approach is also such transaction theory. Next, subject to the assumptions of the model, we derive the optimum number of visits to the bank and the monthly average money holdings. Next, the optimum number of visits to the bank is given by n star which is equals to under root y n into i divided by 2 into f. Next, the optimum average monthly money holding is given by m is equals to under root y n into f divided by 2 into i. Next, the factors that affect the number of visits to the bank are the interest rate, transaction fees f and the nominal income y n. Next, the factors that directly affect the average money holdings are again the interest rate I, the transaction fees F and the nominal income Y N. Next, the elasticity of money demand with respect to income is equals to half and also the elasticity of money demand with respect to the interest rate is half. Next, the elasticity with respect to the transaction fee is also half. Next, there is not much of empirical evidence for the very precise results of baumol tobin model particularly relating to the elasticities. 